And these are truly items that I always, always look for. I can find them in quite a lot of places. Thrift stores especially. Everything I'm going to show you I found at a thrift store. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that I always look for, and sure enough, they turned up at a thrift store. Now, we were traveling. We stopped in a city called Huber Heights, Ohio. Um, and I honestly don't remember the road, but it's right next to the Hampton Inn and a McDonald's. There is a St. Francis thrift store. It's a massive thrift store uh, for what I've seen around my area. This would be huge. Many of the prices were high, but there was some treasures to be found. We're going to give you some really good items that you can find at a thrift store just like we did. So this is the Huber Heights uh, St. Francis Thrift Store. Uh, it's not a bad store. They got a lot of neat stuff in here, so it was fun to look. Now that sheep set is missing the black sheep from the set. It's the most expensive one. I've had those sheep before on a couple occasions. Now, I usually look at the sunglasses. Uh, they have some pretty neat items, though, as I said. You just have to be very selective at what you're buying. You have to know what you're looking at. You don't want to spend too much money on something that's just not worth it. If I can't look it up or I don't know the value, I'm not going to buy it. Uh, that little airplane in the back, too high price. The Boy Scouts items here and the Weebles, those are too expensive. Um, some pottery items, there was a vintage book, salt and pepper shakers, a little dish. So again, there's some neat items, some pipes, those can do very well, a chalice, some pottery, pewter items also. So all good stuff. Now they did have a very nice selection of all kinds of things, ceramics and figures. They had a whole shelf, pretty much just stuff, actually several as you can see. Wider variety than I've seen in quite a few uh, cities around here anyway. I would never see this many uh, items like this at any of the thrift stores around here. So it kind of depends on where you're at as to what you're going to find. But there was a few good buys. I'm just not really big into pottery. If it's something that's going to sit around for a little while, I'm not going to mess with it too much. Again, you can see the variety. It's a big store. Stuff was just everywhere. Tons of shelves. Really an enjoyable store to look through. Now, I always look through the songbooks, and perfect example, there was some there that are worth a few bucks. Or Yolanda Adams, that would be a $10 or $15 one. This is Andre Crouch, and this is the Primo one I found here. Most of these sorts of stores do carry these in there. You just got to pay attention. You just got to look. Now, I found a book and some magazines I'll show you in just a minute. Now, this is the first item that we picked up, the first thing that I found. I always look at songbooks. Every... Geez, probably 90% of every thrift place I go to, thrift store places like that, I can at least get a couple songbooks that should do fairly well. Now, this is about a $50 songbook. It's in excellent condition. We got it for $1.99. Higher than I usually would pay, but I knew the money was in here. So it's a pretty good item. It has many songs. The key to this one here is that it's soulfully. It's soul versions of gospel, and that is what's collected. This would be almost in the northern soul gospel aspect of this whole genre here. Really nice one here. Andre Crouch I usually look for. I've sold some of his records for some pretty darn good money. He's got some early ones on 45s. He's sung some really good soul songs. He's got a great voice. So if you know the name, you'll probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So I thought I would just pull up a few from Terra Peak as well. Now I've got Andre Crouch songbook. Now if you're interested and you want to know a little more, I would recommend you going and looking up Andrew Crouch sheet music as well. And you might be surprised at some of the prices those go for also. Now, here's a top one for 50 bucks. It has 40 songs in it, so it's a little more advanced than the one that I have. But the one that I have is specifically soul, so it has more of an interest to a larger group of people. So the prices will garner top end for something like that. There is a good base of people that collect Andre Crouch items, so his name has always been on my list of things to buy. Now, these are the ones that I picked up. They were $0.99 cents a piece. There's some value in these. These range in the $20 to $45 avenue. 
That's usually what I get for most of these. I've sold some for almost $100. They're from little local ones. Around here, we have the Toledo Speedway. There's one in Indiana. There's a few in Michigan that I've been to as a child. This is one of those prime examples. Some of these drivers went on to bigger and better things. So that's something else you've got to look at when you're buying these. You can see the sticker, the price. It's St. Francis, as I said, in Huber Heights, Ohio. Um, and it was 99 cents each on these, which isn't terrible, wasn't too bad. I wasn't uh, disappointed in what I found. Now I've just pulled up a couple of the programs here. Now this is new Bremen Speedway. It's one of the programs and you can see ones from the very same time frame. This one with uh, shipping costs went for $14.99. This other one sold for $28 plus shipping. Now with this too, if you only list it for $14.99, it's only going to sell for $14.99. This person listed this one for $28 and it sold for $28. If there are no other ones up at that point, I usually start them off at $45 to $57.50 as the starting prices have been with a BO option on them. Any of them from the 70s and before, that's how you price them. That's the average price for some of these. Now, I would look up names if there's someone on the cover or anything else like that. Maybe someone became a, a famous uh, Indianapolis 500 winner or something else like that from doing these smaller tracks and speedways. So that is something I always would recommend digging into first. Here's just another example. Here's the Kill Care Speedway. This is from Ohio as well. $45 for this 1969 one. I have ones in the same era, the same date range. So again, that's why I say that many of these can sell for you know, 45, 50, 75, even up to $100 or more. Again, depending on what specific is in that one that you have. These newer ones like 2000s and up, they don't sell very well because they're fairly new. The people who are buying and collecting vintage magazines probably remember when those were out. That has been my complete understanding of the folks that buy for me. They'll usually ask if I have this year, that year, if I list a bunch of them all at once. Many times when I run into one, there are many there because people collected these. If they were racing fans, they went to every one in their local town. They did that here in my town. So excellent items to find. Got many different ones, again, all for 99 cents. So prices, as I said, would be 20 to 40 bucks or even higher on most all of these. I've never sold one from the 70s or earlier for less than 20 bucks. Let's just put it that way. Now, the most expensive thing that I bought was this book right here, Guns of the Civil War. This is a very specific one by Dennis Adler. Um, I'll show you the UPC so you could actually probably scan it from this video if you're interested. Now the last one of these went for around 50 bucks. It sells fairly well on Amazon so that may be a better source on this specific example than eBay. We paid 10 bucks for it. So not terribly high priced but if you don't word it, keyword it right and everything, you're not going to get top dollar for it. If you're not up on adding up all the words and what's important in your title, you're probably not going to get as much for it. So title, photo, all that stuff means something, as does the category you stick some of these in. This one sells routinely, so I wasn't really worried on it either way, though. Now, flopping around and scanning through here, you can see they sell in the $40 to $50 price range. Again, if you only list it for 40 bucks, it's only going to sell for 40 bucks. This book, if I'm not mistaken, has been out of print for a little while. There are two editions of it also. The newer edition is usually the best one. You want the dust jacket on these as well. This is something you would list in the Civil War collector section. Amazon is a great place for these. You can usually get 20 to 30% more on Amazon and sometimes twice that as well. So. You've just got to price it correctly and put it on the correct site. You can also sell these on A-Books, which is owned by Amazon, if you're not aware. So there are many sources besides just eBay for some of these items. eBay is probably the best source for selling the Andre Crouch, as well as the Speedway programs. Now, I spent some time looking in there. The wife was having fun looking at some of the vintage clothing, so I looked through the entire store. Uh, and these are the best things that I found in the entire store. Some of the collectibles behind the counter were very expensive uh, for a reseller aspect. Price-wise, as a collector, wasn't too bad. So overall, it was a good thrift store. I would recommend it whether you're just going to find something, 
clothing or whatever. It was a pretty good place, though, in all honesty. They were friendly, helpful, uh, didn't make us wait. There was enough staff in the place. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Seven gift set for every assignment. This one packs the full line, including 007 aftershave, hairdressing, and cologne. That's 007 for the license to kill women. When you use 007, be kind.